Hello, everyone. Good morning, or good afternoon, or whatever it is. How is everybody? Um, Natalia, did you have a good uh, holiday? Hi, Vipin. Yes, I did indeed. It's It's been a while. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Christmas holidays were, were great, actually. Happy New Year to everyone. I think we are going to wait a couple of minutes. Uh, I do not know whether we're going to get a big crowd here, but uh, we'll see. Can you all see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, I think we'll, we should start. Uh, The first order of business, of course, is the antitrust policy. We um, we have to follow the antitrust policy, which uh, you know, according to the to Hyperledger, because we are uh, competitors, uh, and obviously we cannot be colluding. That's one. Second is the Hyperledger code of conduct, which implies that what not which which means that we treat each other with respect, even when we are disagreeing with each other. Uh, and that is the, uh, you know, we are meant to read both of these uh, policies found here, but you can, uh, you can look at these uh, links to see more detail on both of those policies. Um, First order of business is usually uh, introductions. I think we should um, do it, even though most of us know each other. So um, let's start with uh, Elena. So basically, uh, Elena, the, uh, we introduce each other uh, it, we introduce ourselves to the group so that um, people know what you're working on and why you are in this group and uh, so that we can have intelligent conversations. Uh, if you do not want to uh, introduce yourself, that's fine too, but uh, you know, it would be good if uh, we can start with uh, Elena. I guess not. Uh, Mike is turned off. Eh? Mike is turned off? Yeah, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now we, we can hear you. Oh, that's good because uh, I think something was wrong with my sound. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, 
I didn't hear you either because um, uh, starting the first minutes uh, had some problems with the sound, but I take it, it you need some introduction from me, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm here for the first time. Um, and um, uh, I represent a company called Exact Pro. Uh, we specialize in software testing for financial market infrastructures. So we basically work with stock exchanges, clearing houses, banks, um, securities, dis depositories, uh, etc. Uh, we are pretty experienced with financial software built with traditional technologies. But starting from last year, we got engaged in a number of DLT related projects. Um, of course, from the software testing side. And uh, those projects are either mm, around trading platforms on crypto exchanges or around post-trade activities on the traditional financial instruments, but carried out on new technology platforms built with DLT. Uh, the majority of our post-trade projects are now on R3 Corda platform, but we know that a lot of our prospective clients are using Hyperledger, different um, uh, projects within Hyperledger, so we are very interested to look into that space as well. So that's pretty much my story. Yeah, great. Um, great to hear that you are here. And does um, the testing that you do result in some kind of an auditing or certification uh, of financial infrastructure or is it uh, more to just um, make sure that the software works properly or is it also got a regulatory element because i have heard of your company it's pretty big uh, I think. yeah yeah we are currently uh 550 people um uh, for uh, quite some time, we were part of uh, the London Stock Exchange Group. Uh, we were there from 2015 to 2018, and then our management has bought the company back, so we are now back to being an independent business. Uh, as for um, uh, our activities around, uh, as you said, certification, we do not issue any certificates uh, to our uh, activities, but we provide extensive reports what we specialize on is uh, automated testing so when we are on the project we provide uh, all the tooling uh, all the automated test libraries uh, as well as ac activities and support around the software do you have any um, open source involvement or is it only uh, yes. uh, yes. all... uh, majority of our tools are open sourced now um, so we are um, mostly commercializing our service rather than tools. So tools are open source. So if I go to your website, I should be able to get an idea of what's what's happening. Yes. Um, the other the other thing I would like to ask you is, in the crypto and uh, uh, crypto space, and I, as well as digital assets. Mm -hmm. uh, custody or some other activities post trade and so on uh, you are you said you're working with uh, corda uh, are there any projects that are live or is it all in the mvp sort of testing phase uh, one of the projects uh, uh, is in uh, its testing uh, phase and a couple of others are live already live Okay, so uh, any that are, that are live that that you can either share or uh, you know maybe uh, let us know because we do have a use case project that we can actually enter some of these projects into and then we can uh, talk about uh, uh, you know the uh, front to back, the software development uh, life cycle, and obviously testing is uh, an important part of that. Uh, so later on, uh, but let's go through the introductions right now. And then, uh, you, you know, uh, next is uh, money. 
Uh, I'm uh, Manipal Lai from Swapcrub. Uh, we are uh, developing uh, a product of B2C, uh, digital assets trading. And, and using Can you barely products. hear you, Mani? I, I don't know whether it's just me or everybody else. Uh, <clears throat> is it clear now? Clearer, definitely. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, Manny Pillai from uh, Swaps Hub. Um, we are developing a DLT platform slash blockchain, and the focus is all about um, uh, two areas. Uh, one is on the digital asset space, uh, providing life cycle for digital assets between dealers and customers. Uh, and the other side of it is on the OTC derivative side, is something that we'll be working with is the CD, is the, uh, is the CDM working group. Uh, in how to bring derivatives uh, also as, uh, as well on the DLT platform. And your product is based on, uh, I mean, that particular product is uh, focused on Corda, which is um, another area that you and Elena have um, in common. Yeah. Uh, and later on, Mani will be talking about, uh, uh, you know, some uh, workshop that, um, he has proposed. I, I will also be um, um, talking on that because um, anyway, we'll we'll uh, go forward with the introductions. Uh, next is uh, Murali. Yes. Uh, hi, Vipin, um, and everybody else. Good. Happy New Year. Um, so I have uh, I'm working currently on uh, CPM con uh, consumer privacy management moved off from you know capital markets a little bit but uh, still really interested in that and um, uh, applying you know blockchain and other technologies to that um, that's it and I'm a maintainer at Hyperledger Fabric. Hey, Murali is being modest here. He's probably one of the few guys who know Hyperledger Fabric inside and out. And I remember meeting with him the first ever Hyperledger meetup where we uh, hooked together the front end, uh, front end at, uh, at that time of uh, DA's platform with the, uh, with the IBM blockchain which eventually became Hyperledger Fabric. And, and that was a long time ago in blockchain years. We have come very far from there now, <laughs> in a good direction. Um, the problem that I'm seeing is, uh, you know, there is a uh, talk about uh, the trough of uh, disillusionment and uh, many projects seem to have stalled um, I mean, I don't even want to bring up the State Street uh, stuff, but, uh, you know, many have uh, not evolved much, uh, but there also are news of lots of interesting projects out there. Uh, and if, if uh, Elena's uh, correct, there are many that are in production with Corda. I also wanted to get some of the Corda guys here because they they seem to be the ones concentrating on uh, financial infrastructure. Uh, go ahead, Murali. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, I was saying that's spot on. Uh, there's uh, uh, the the State Street itself. They're still in. They're still deep into blockchain. So. You shouldn't, I mean, don't read too much into that, please. Uh, they, uh, except that they are, they, they don't, they, they want to approach it from a different angle, let me put it that way. Um, uh, rather because than. custody angle? It is, it, they, they, they always been interested in custody and they always been interested in, uh, you know, in bringing tokenization, in the, doing tokenization the right manner. Um, and also uh, bringing tokenization directly, uh, not just for, um, not just for um, uh, uh, other assets, but also also for cash as well, which is where the main challenge was. And they are they are still, as far as I know, they're still doing all that. Um, and so, but but to your point, you know, I think the direct application of technology such as Corda, 
uh, ice also bearing a lot of fruits in many different areas as far as I know. Uh, which is, but on the other hand, places such as, uh, uh, I think somewhere in South America, I forget the exact company, you may know all this also. They are, they are actually applying fabric technology directly, very usefully um, into, into doing uh, capital work, capital markets work there. So uh, very successfully as well. As far as I know, one of the few people who have applied that, applied that at that scale um, to, that, uh, to that area. So it's, it's, so it's uh, I won't write it off <laughs> yet, but, uh, but no, yeah. No, 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 I'm the, not writing it off. I mean, obviously I'm in the space. Right. But I'm saying that in the the pathway to adoption is bumpy, uh, which which is normally the case. Uh, we had uh, big shakeouts in uh, very important uh, technical uh, initiatives, like for example, the whole internet thing. 2001, 2000, 2001 was a big shakeout. Everybody, uh, you know, all the many pro projects died. Uh, but what survived out of that uh, storm was the ones that took over the world. Correct. So, yeah. so they, you know, it doesn't mean that uh, it's all dire news. I'm just saying that this is all natural uh, part of progression. Um, well, Murdy, can you? Where do you work now and what was your focus? So on? I am working on in a company called Manitou, M E A N E T U. Uh, it's a startup. And uh, we are into CPM, um, consumer privacy management. And uh, I, hopefully I can, I'll be able to share more in a few months, right? Uh, if it's fairly new startup, like it started up in November last year. And, um, you know, we are applying all kinds of technologies and bringing all kinds of uh, thing to make life easy for uh, for big companies to move into the space quickly. And they, the word on the street is that they are forced to move into it very rapidly uh, because of all the regulations. So, so, so does this mean that this Manitou uh, CPM will integrate with uh, blockchain? Allow me to answer that question in a few months, please. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, 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 uh, that's fine. Uh, that's a good you're, question. You're, uh, you're in the stealth mode. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, obviously, you're, you don't want to make any major announcements. Right. Um, but uh, I did look at your website, and it seems promising. Right. Um, we had, uh, in the identity working group, we had some presentations about uh, FATF uh, travel rule and so on, which obviously has great uh, impact on uh, know your customer and on all of the, uh, I mean, not, not FATF travel rules, sorry. FATF had rules about um, uh, how to do proper KYC and remote KYC. In fact, we're gonna have some presentations in the identity working group on remote identity proofing because uh, even in India, for example, they have allowed video-based identity proofing uh, for financial uh, matters. So uh, it, this is very interesting because usually the identity proofing is based on physical presence. Uh, you have to show up at the bank to get uh, a bank account open. But if you're going to have remote proofing, what are the uh, methods by which you can improve the quality of remote proofing. Anyway, these are imp these are uh, important uh, things even for us because uh, the uh, capital markets uh, infrastructure uh, is highly reliant on that. One of the pieces that is highly reliant on is that the uh, proofing and uh, uh, a proofing of identity and also authentication uh, based on various characteristics. Uh, now uh, we go to Natalia and hopefully she'll tell us what she has been up to in the past couple of months and tell us more about uh, what's going to happen uh, this, you know, how, how we can improve uh, 
uh, and take our um, take the capital market sig in in a new direction. Um, <laughs> you've asked too much, I think, yeah, Bipin. Uh, so from from my side, from for an introduction to the ones that don't know me, um, I'm working in the debt capital markets origination. Um, which is basically originating bonds for issuers um, across the different sectors. And I'm based in, in Spain, so mostly my focus is European. Um, I don't have, I, I like to say this, but I don't have a technical background. I have a business background. Uh, but I am indeed um, aware of all the importance of technology in the issue process, so I'm trying to, to learn as much as I can. Um, from our side, there's been only, well, there's been a few now, a few issuances uh, using uh, blockchain um, in, in this case. Uh, the specifics of the issuances have been very, uh, I don't think I can say you can extrapolate this yet um, because you know the, the process is still very difficult and it's been basically a proof uh, and for the rest of the world and for the media to say, hey, we are using this technology and we've issued a bond using blockchain. Um, at the moment, uh, I am in a working group internally uh, at the bank where I work to see how we can implement uh, this technology. So I believe I will be able to share with you more information in the coming months. Beautiful. Um, I mean, if any of this stuff is uh, public, we would like to know about them and actually put them in the, in the, in the use case. Um, project sure uh, i mean b basically the issuances uh, that i'm referring to is the bond issued by the world bank that happened i think it was two years ago and then more recently here in spain um santander and bpa which are two of the largest banks here um have issued uh, as well uh small bonds like in the in the amount of 50 million um, but you, unless you work in the, you, and unless you are in the working team, you have no clue of what's going on actually, because you only get the, the press release. What I can tell you is that these banks have worked with uh, other fintech companies. They've partnered with, with these fintechs to, to do so. Um, I know the name of these two fintechs, maybe you know them. One is uh, Nibaura and the other is origin. So, so basically the knowledge is, I, I cannot share anything because I don't know, but I, I believe I will, I'm gonna be in a position to share something once I'm in this project and I have more news. Yeah, and you're, and you're allowed to share. Anyway, we have, um, uh, I mean, the, the reason why we go through the introductions is so that people are, aware of the projects that everyone is working on and it becomes very useful in a group like this. Uh, there are a couple of themes that have come through. One is the theme of uh, tokenization. Uh, the other is, you know, tokenization, including every, every aspect of it. And Money talked about it. And I am very interested in this topic as well um, and so did Murali uh, with reference to State Street and uh, Natalia of course for the insurance process and uh, as far as I'm concerned I'm the host of this call my name is Vipin Bharathan I have a um, a consulting business on the on the blockchain consulting and digital transformation uh, and I run these two groups. This one is uh, capital markets focused. The other one is identity uh, working group on Hyperledger. Uh, we have uh, very 
interesting and important presentations on the identity working group and on this particular topic here in capital markets we have about seven projects that we have launched but none of them are getting the traction they deserve because people are even though they have volunteered uh, you know they are um, busy with their regular day job it's very difficult to put time into free uh, open source efforts unless you're getting paid to do that um, so with that i uh, want to say something about the roadmap i had prepared a slide but i don't want to spend 20 minutes on it uh, the intros did give us a good insight into what people are working on and what people are concerned about so the this a, a group like this is more for um, collaboration between people who would normally not collaborate or even hear of each other like for example i would never have heard of the names of origin and uh, uh, fintechs like that which are based in spain um, without natalia's words on that subject so that's one way we collaborate. Second is we have these projects that we have embarked on. Uh, one of them is going to yield some fruit, which is the uh, token taxonomy framework or token taxonomy initiative, um, which has uh, published uh, something called a token taxonomy framework, which is attempting to standardize uh, how tokens are uh, defined, usually using a compositional architecture and uh, money suggested that we use the existing TTF token taxonomy framework to work to workshop a small uh, use case for um, a token a simple token and then try to um, work it all the way to implementation and the natural place for that implementation would be hyperledger besu because it is based on Ethereum. And so Ethereum has already existing standards for token uh, tokens on the blockchain. But so we'll try to marry TTF with the ERC20 and other standards around tokens in a concrete workshop I have already spoken to Marley about this. Uh, and Marley Gray, who's the head of uh, the TTF uh, Technical Steering Committee. And he presented here on TTF, a uh, pretty elaborate uh, uh, setup for the token taxonomy framework. But what I found was he had talk talked about a visual token designer and I did not see that the visual token designer was uh, ready for use by outsiders. In fact, Marley confirmed that, uh, that the token designer is not, uh, is not available to us, uh, at least at this moment, because it's, not, it's still incomplete. Uh, obviously, there are other ways in which the token uh, tokens can be defined uh, directly using JSON, which is a data format. And we can then uh, use some of the tools that he has to test whether the definition is correct or not. And there are some other tools also available, but this is the main problem with uh, most of the blockchain initiatives that there is a lack of uh, the, the tool chain is very, uh, you know, in the preliminary stages, 
it does not integrate well end to end. Uh, so that is a big problem. And I believe uh, uh, we see that even with the token taxonomy framework. So it's going to be slightly more difficult to start this process. Um, and I wanted uh, money to say something about this because he was the one who proposed the, uh, the workshop. So that is the first workshop. The second workshop, we had talk, we'll talk about it in a minute. But before that, I think money should say something about, if he wants to say something about the workshop and how will it will integrate into an end-to-end -end solution. Um, uh, I think, Vipin, you covered pretty much you know, the most of the, uh, most of the items. Um, it, it is just that we thought as a group, it would be worthwhile to apply standards. As I always believe uh, any blockchain project uh, with standards have, have the legs to you know, stay afloat for a longer period of time or some sort of commercially viable solution rather than using any kind of proprietary you know, structures, data structures and implementation. So uh, I thought this could be a good way for us all uh, to explore um, and the fact that uh, Hyperledger J2 is now an incubated inside within Hyperledger project, uh, it's a good uh, uh, platform to uh, define uh, tokens, uh, particularly year to date 20 tokens, uh, based on and then you use the CTF standard, uh, which is the CTF framework. Uh, but without any further inputs, I mean, you know, we have the framework, we have the formula, the what we call the recipe to define new tokens. But how does that eventually transform into, as you pointed out, as a JSON data format? Uh, without that format, if everyone, if every vendor starts implementing CTF to whatever they think it is it, it, it defined, then again, it, it, you're getting into a standard inconsistent uh, issue. Um, so that's why we thought that you know, if, if there is some format out there, um, that defines this token, so even a simpler token, then we could then apply that on um, on a blockchain like a day two to explore how easy is it to incorporate, uh, let's say, an ERC20 token with the CTF platform. So that, that's all my thought process. Um, you know, if others have ideas, more than welcome to discuss. Yeah, I would like to hear comments about this. Uh, one, uh, one of the things that Money said was that uh, the definition of the token and other uh, areas about the issuance of the token and so on would be covered with, uh, uh, with the Besu platform, but the further exchange uh, like, for example, trading uh, or any kind of secondary market, settlement, post-trade work, and so on, uh, can be done uh, through uh, Corda. Uh, so uh, essentially what I'm hearing is the integration of these platforms, like, for example, Hyperledger Indy for doing identity work, uh, Hyperledger base, I mean, Besu for this particular work uh, in, in terms of issuance, and then uh, a framework like Corda, which is more uh, geared towards geared towards oh, uh, bilateral, yeah, yeah, bilateral capital markets contract management. Yes, so uh, there, of course, there would be other standards that come into play like CDM uh, that would uh, define the contracts properly and uh, CDM is now only being used supposedly uh, first definition is for derivatives uh, and uh, but swaps and derivatives but they have um, they want to expand their uh, field of vision to include other securities. Yeah, they, they do have now because the past, I would say, two months, uh, because of the equity swap work being done by Axoni and, and uh, based upon the other working group members, uh, the security definition is now in place within 
في EMI as well as the life cycle events like execution, allocation uh, are already there. Those are all well defined. Um, separately, I am trying to get the Easter Cerium uh, and uh, TPF, uh, basically Enterprise Ethereum uh, Alliance group members, to talk to each other uh, so that the TPF definition would become or at least would be referred to the CDM and hence contract now can, define, can now refer to uh, data standards. Uh, ERC20 for more for operations, but CDF is more for definition for those ones. So, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to make that a uh, working group uh, get together. So, oh, that's cool uh, because um, the TTF guys uh, have uh, invited me to be an observer on the platform for doing the custody work, um, but maybe even for this other other stuff. So they have. Uh, extended me a uh, invitation to be an observer so maybe i can participate in some of that work as well um, since i'm not a direct member of i'm an individual and independent so i i don't pay uh, dues to the ethereum enterprise alliance and that's what attracts me most to hyperledger because the um, it's a completely open platform. Anybody can participate. It is not restricted to just the members. And uh, some people may find that, you know, because it's free, uh, people think, oh, it's kind of worthless, but that's not the case. I see that uh, many discussions that happen in, these, uh, in this particular group, meaning, Hyperledger as a whole and or in various SIGs, especially the healthcare and the telecom SIG are very detailed and technical uh, and also have a lot of collaboration with uh, different parties. For example, uh, we did have a performance and scale working group, but uh, that uh, has the the activities have come uh, have become very minimal because of many many things one of them being the lack of participation but i'm sure that as the space grows in maturity we are going to see much more activity there and elena you your uh, you know the testing stuff is definitely something that is very very important and people don't even think about it. They have, you know, test coverage, uh, you know, those kind of things. In fact, I had uh, written up something on the chaos engineering and the blockchain, which uh, sort of started out something on that topic. Anyway, um, so we, you know, the, the, the second workshop that we were going to do was to do with, uh, with custody. Uh, we already had a pretty elaborate discussion on custody. Uh, money was there for that as well. Um, and I don't know, Murali, whether you want to say something about custody, but uh, any contributions to that custody workshop will be useful. We are just trying to define uh, what are the uh, what the use case should have. And uh, I will circulate uh, a material on that because I just you know there are lots of guidances from, like for example, SEC on digital asset uh, custody. Uh, there was uh, a, a news item from Switzerland saying that six, um, which is the Swiss uh, stock exchange, has collaborated with uh, with uh, you know a fintech. In fact, they launched a fintech and then they spun it off. 
they are going to have both types of assets. That means they're going to have digital cash on the blockchain uh, and as well as issuance of equities on the blockchain. And then they are try going to have some way of uh, doing DVP, uh, delivery versus payment on the blockchain. Uh, so this is definitely a serious um, effort because it involves the Swiss stock exchange, Swisscom, and various other parties in Switzerland. And the whole idea is to democratize uh, equity to be uh, micro equity. Uh, that means you know that you can participate in equity uh, in investing with very little money. And I think this is one of the big uh, big problems that you know you got to be an accredited investor with a certain uh, amount of capital in order to fruitfully participate in investment activities. So this is this micro equity concept is to democratize uh, the equity, uh, you know, investment in equity. The so I have all those links in the in in partly in the custody stuff and also in the uh, new um, in in some of the pages that I've, I'm constructing there. Um, anybody else has anything more to say about this um, or any view on what we should be working on? I would be glad to hear. Yes, Murali. We can't hear you if you're speaking because you've taken yourself off mute. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear. Sorry, I was just saying that I uh, I don't have anything right now, for example, um, but I would, uh, I assume that if I go to custody workshop link, I allow the information there and I can start looking at it. Yes, definitely. Okay. So, um, so the, one of the most, uh, before we even got, go to custody, right, uh, the issuance and the trading side, you mentioned the lack of you know, cash on the ledger, right? As one of the big impediments. So I was just talking about the six project, you know, six um, initiative, where they put some cash on the ledger. Swiss francs, obviously, uh, some kind of a stable coin setup. But uh, what is more interesting is going to be the all of the uh, all of the guys who are talking about uh, putting, you know, all of the central bank, putting central bank digital currency, issuing central bank digital currency. Uh, and if that happens, then there may be uh, some, uh, what do you call it? Then, then it becomes possible for cash on the ledger and then also for uh, DVP and other things. So I, I see that Ravi has joined. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Ravi, or anything? Um, sorry, I, uh, I joined quite late. Um, maybe I would go along with the call, and uh, if needed, I would jump in. Sorry, I'm just catching up. Yeah, yeah, we are almost at the end of the session here because. We were basically talking about the uh, one about the roadmap for 2020 for the capital markets SIG. Then we talked about a couple of projects that, that we could start. One is the 
modeling of a token digital asset on the TTI token, uh, token taxonomy framework, sorry, not TTI, TTF. Uh, yeah. And then using that definition to issue the tokens using ERC20 or something like that into BESU, Hyperledger BESU, which is an yeah. Ethereum vari yeah. variant. And then yeah. uh, continuing that uh, chain, that tool chain into, uh, let's say, Corda uh, to follow the CDM standard. And um, so that's, that's one aspect. The other was a custody workshop that we were going to uh, work on with the TTF also. And uh, we have a observer status. I, at least they gave it to me. I don't know whether they will uh, extend it to someone else as well, but I will bring uh, what I know about custody to them so that, uh, you know, because they are mostly technologists. Uh, so I would assume that the people in this group, uh, we, can, we can talk about custody uh, in detail, uh, yep. you know, and then uh, we can take some of that knowledge back into the into the TTF uh, TTI guys, um, and uh, then we can create some artifacts there. And so, so in terms of the other, the first project, we said that uh, we will actually uh, put it in Hyperledger Labs. Uh, the artifacts for a simple token that we issue and then we will uh, bring it all the way into Besu um, in terms of uh, so that, that that was the idea anyway so yeah great I think uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the agenda and uh, this satisfy quite a few questions or the area that I also wanted to uh, get some insights on custody being one of them. One quick pointer that is coming to my mind uh, within here is, you know, when we talk about tokens, um, given that we are also uh, including security tokens being into capital market, I think off-chain compliance is certainly very, very important. Not all the compliance can be, uh, you know, fulfilled being just at on-chain. So uh, I believe if we have it somewhere covered within the given agenda, great. Otherwise, I was feeling what is the balance where we can have some kind of an on-chain compliance versus the off-chain compliance? In which scenario, how do we go about it? What are some of the best practices? Uh, I think that could be a valuable discussion in case if uh, we can brainstorm on that side. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea is to make it easy for you to issue things like trace reporting, uh, which are comp compliance artifacts, right? Trace, uh, uh, trace uh, reporting, that's one. Second is uh, that, you know, the KYC has been done for the uh, individuals or companies that are trading on the platform. Uh, if you have any other concrete uh, off-chain compliance, uh, you know, suggestions, or not only suggestions, but backed by law, uh, you know, then we can uh, try to get some of those questions answered. Yeah, I think uh, at the moment, uh, my understanding was, uh, you know, when we look at the compliances related to uh, to the securities, I think um, there are some of the compliance which, if we can keep it off chain, that helps in terms of scalability, the uh, throughput of the solution. I think from that perspective, I also wanted to go further deeper into this. There are some basic understanding that I have uh, on this particular topic, but uh, I certainly wanted to even brainstorm with the uh, people on this topic and uh, see in case if we can further strengthen this. But yeah, that's just one piece of uh, um, you know query that I had or a topic that I would like to bring. But otherwise, uh, 
the agenda look great? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the agenda is one thing, but you know, the problem that we have is that we only meet once in every two weeks, and normally nothing gets done in between. And uh, but for us to achieve something concrete, we gotta have either uh, some kind of a working group, separate, you know, task force kind of thing, and then we come back and we report on the progress of that. So, and also we can collaborate on the wiki and on the email list and all that. So I'll try to send out more emails, but I want people to jump in and say things instead of uh, just being passive consumers, because otherwise we will get nowhere. It'll be just me talking. You know, and it, it's kind of boring and worthless. On one hundred percent, I think uh, the whole intention of uh, the group is uh, everybody sharing their understanding, and then everybody get benefit of it. Yeah. So um, hopefully, uh, we will have uh, increased participation, and I'm looking for ways in which we can increase the asynchronous participation that means not during the call itself but in between calls um i suggest um, um maybe we can at least have an initial offline conversation uh yeah whoever wants to participate you can suggest the time uh even later this week to take look at the topic of the tokens and what i have in mind and what uh, uh every time has in mind uh, and maybe even get some input from early uh, Early on, how do we take this forward? So at least we have some sort of framework uh, into this whole technology. So you're proposing a separate uh, sort of call or offline conversation? I, I about... think, yeah, I just come up with some. What What do you want to achieve? You know, I, I threw in an idea, and then we can have some ideas. Maybe we can get put together something, uh, and then and then from that we would develop a, a possible a, a, a scenario to you know, further go in depth. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, now, um, anybody else uh, wants to say anything more about all this stuff, uh, like Elena or Natalia? Great. Um, so, 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 sorry, sorry, I didn't manage. It's Natalia here. I didn't manage to to, to unmute my phone. So, so basically, um, in my case, sometimes when when in the conversations, um, if I'm not participating more, it's just because sometimes I don't understand, you know, the the, the concept. So I feel like there's I, I, there's nothing um, I can add. Um, in these cases, uh, or especially in the latest topics. Uh, I, you know, I'm I'm learning from it, so that's why in my case, I'm I'm quiet. Well, if you have if you have stuff that doesn't, uh, you know, that you don't understand, it's very good to stop, uh, stop us and ask questions. In fact, I would say there is nothing uh, that is con that no question will should be considered. Uh, you know, uninformed because it will also help the person who's presenting or talking uh, think more clearly about what they are talking about because the uh, questions are very, very, very important. Uh, and that can be one way in which we can all participate because otherwise, uh, you know, the the understanding of the of the person who who is talking can also be increased by people questioning them that's what i sincerely believe because sometimes we just toss out terms without completely understanding them or uh, or not uh, you know that these things are 
very common in technology presentations that people just talk talk about stuff without clearly explaining things. Uh, and I think the questions are very important. Looks like uh, the next uh, the next meeting, guys, for the next meeting are here, Dano is on the call, or is he come to talk about Besu? I don't know. I just woke up, I had a late night. I thought this was 10 o'clock Pacific, not 10 o'clock Eastern, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll uh, come back to uh, you on this uh, topic, Dano, because we will need your help for the Besu, you know, ERC 20 based, uh, or any other token standard based stuff to implement the TTF, uh, TTI uh, on BESU. So uh, I had tried to get people on the, um, from BESU on, on here today, but uh, obviously I was a little too late in uh, putting out the word on the BESU channel. But in the meantime, we will uh, collaborate on this. Yeah, right now, most of our people who would probably call into this are in an offsite in Brisbane, Australia. So right about now, they're asleep. Yeah, and hopefully they're not uh, suffering too much from the, the smoke and the fire. Um, anyway, yeah, this is, a, this is a problem for us because of the... Um, because of the slot that we have chosen, 10 a.m. A lot of people cannot participate. Anyway, it's been a it's been wonderful um, conversation. I'm going to uh, try to make the minutes up as much as I remember them, and list after listening to the audio. Uh, and then we can collaborate further, Dano, uh, on how we should go about uh, uh, integrating the TTF into BESU. Thank you. Anything else? I guess. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I think uh, that's it for now. The next call is probably the the DCI guys. Sweta is here, so it must be DCI. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to close, and hopefully you won't get knocked out, uh, Sweta, because I have the. Uh, I have the host key, and so I'm going to just stop the share and get off. Uh, okay, yeah, should be good. Um, you might get knocked off. I'm sorry if that happens. No problem. All right, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thanks. Sorry, I misread the invite. <laughs>